being able to collaborate is claimed to be a core skill for students as well as for teachers. Besides the concrete how-to of using tools that enable collaboration, there's also a learning curve in how to work together collaboratively on the social level. Good experience in tackling these socio-technical challenges was gained with the free and open source tool Hatchdoc over the last three years. Compared to collaborative writing tools of big ICT players, Hatchdoc is closer to a web page than to an office document and thus enables the mixing and remixing of rich media sources of various kinds as well as easy publishing on the web. This way, it empowers learners and teachers to collaboratively develop content in an OER mindset, meaning that their work is intended to be published on the web later on, or being developed in the open while others can watch and participate. Hello and thanks for your interest in this video. My name is Axel Dürkop. I work as an advisor for conceptual and technical development at Hamburg University of Technology for the Hamburg Open Online University. In this, se in this session, I want to give you a brief insight into the technical and ped pedagogical potential of using Hatchdoc for teaching and learning. Thus, this presentation is divided in two parts. First, I'm going to give you a very short introduction to Hatchdoc and its potential as an ad hoc website and OER editor. Second, I'm going to discuss three different use cases Hatchdoc was used in. You will find all sources mentioned in this video at this address. Now, introducing Hatchdoc. In this part, I will show you how to start a Hatchdoc. I will show you the simple beauty of Markdown, how to embed images, videos, and H5P content, and add an, a Creative Commons license before you publish the Hatchdoc on the web. What is Hatchdoc and how can you use it? As you can see, I'm at demo.hatchdoc.org, which is a demo instance from the developers in order to let people check out the potentials of Hatchdoc. All you need to do to get started is click on New Guest Note without any registration or login. This gives you, after a short while, a path with a cryptic URL you see here which is also, also the URL that you would share with others um, and it's difficult to guess this URL. So um, share this URL with others and many, many people can collaborate on this pad at the same time. In order to save some time, I've prepared a pad with some content hosted at my university as this is a free and open source software um, it can be hosted wherever you want to for yourself. We have it at our university, which is quite handy. And this is what I use here. So three main aspects of this view I want to point at. You have a two-part view here. On the left-hand side, which one might call the source code view, you write Markdown. In my references, I will point to some good sources where you can learn more about Markdown. Um, but uh, in a minute, I will give you a short introduction to the beauty of this simplicity. On the right-hand side, what the, this is the, um, the rendered view of this markdown. So this is what comes out when you do this on the left-hand side. And there's also a publish button that we will use at the end um, in order to really make this public and shareable for example, as an OER or as some kind of landing page for whatever reason. We will see this later on. Another point that is important is for you to learn more about Hatchdoc. There's a question mark right here. When you click on this, you will get some help on Markdown and also on the features um, that Hatchdoc has and that I cannot mention in this video here. Please look for yourself. And last thing is, there are three different, different views. This is the one that you would probably share with others 
to attract them to the content and not to the editing. Um, so if you want to inform people about the content of this document, you would share this link. If you click on this one and share this link, this might be an invitation to collaborate on this document because you show people where and how to add uh, content and contribute to this Hatchdog document. Well, that's all for now. Let's have a look at Markdown. Um, as you can see, there's some uh, there's an icon bar on top, which gives you the um, um, a good uh, which which um, is comparable to the icon bars in Office uh, you know, text processor programs and other programs that you might know for writing. Um, but the main thing is that these icons um, cause special characters um, in your text to um, to be inserted, like hashes for headlines, like dashes for lists, and asterisks for bold and italics. Um, there's also some kind of special markup for links, which you can find here, and all the other tips and tricks you will find at the under the question mark help that I showed you. Well, this is in short what Markdown is. So it is a way of writing text and putting special characters in between to cause the rendering of this website here. And we're in the browser, so this is also a website as this is. But if you click on the eye here, this gets more like this looks more like a website. And this is what I like so much about Hatchdog. It's not a, an online text processor. It's some kind of a website generator. It's very easy for people to dive in without knowing HTML to write something on the web and finally publish this. It's, a, it's always just a one pager, can be very, very long, but the, the killer aspect, the killer feature of Hatchdog is that many, many people can work on this single document together, be authors of the same text of the same website and uh, have perhaps the idea in mind to share this later on on the web for others to profit from it. Now, let's see what makes this potential of being more a website than uh, an office document, what makes this so big. First of all, I want to show you how to easily embed an image here. I've prepared one for you, of course, cat content. This is, uh, this is clear. And I just drag and drop this image here to this tab with my document and drop this here. It gets uploaded to, my, um, to the instance of my university. And this gives you um, the possibility to, for example, ask your class to please find all cat images on the web and collect them here. It's as easy as that. Within minutes, you will have 20, 50, whatever cat images or whatever images here, because it's a, an easy way to, to have a, a picture gallery um, um, of um, a certain object or whatever the idea might be. So this is this is very easy. Of course, this deep linking is not is not very nice as I did it. But as you have seen, I, I um, instead of downloading this this image, I just copied it over. So it is it got uploaded again to um, to the the Hatchdog server at my university. So there is no deep linking here. Um, question is, do I have the right to have this? document uh, to have this image in my pad. But as long as I have not published the pad, this will not be found in search engines, this document. And as long as this scope is protected or something other than freely, um, this won't be a thing that might uh, cause uh, legal problems. So um, at this moment, this is really a safe space and you can really collect things here because they don't appear in search engines and won't be found unless or until 
you publish this hatch dog. Now, what else is possible here? Um, let's um, add a video to this document. So I scroll down to get uh, some free space here. And as we're on a, on a website, it's easy to, exa for example, embed an iframe. So I take this video here and click on share and click on embed and then i take this here to copy it over and paste it here and now i have the video in my in my hatchdog document also a very nice um, assignment for students to ask them please go to youtube and find everything you can have on web development or HTML or whatever the assignment is. And they bring back a collection of videos uh, that they like, that they can curate, they can write things about the video here. And um, within minutes, you will get uh, a list of lots of videos that um, you can use for the class or for later on, or have a curated um, document of um, of certain of certain videos now but this is and this points to this iframe here which is um, which is a classical html um, element that makes it possible to embed other web contents into a website or as you can see here in the hatchdog document this points to the potential of this editor because whatever you can have as an iframe can be embedded into a hatchdog document, given that the server where the content comes from allows embedding. But yeah, most of the times in my experience, this seems to be possible. Now, another example, which makes hatchdog, uh, for example, an interactive document for learning is embedding H5P content here. So another space here, I have prepared um, another example with H5P content, and um, as you can see, this is uh, the example of an interactive video. So I can click on embed to get me this, um, this iframe markup here, and I paste this at this place here. Well, it is a little bit too wide, and uh, there's a solution for that. I use a service that is called embed responsively, which is great because when I post this iframe markup here and click on embed, it gives me some markup, a little bit longer the markup, but as you can see, what I have from that is I will have a responsive container here, which also looks great if you open it on a mobile phone on a mobile phone. So that's it. So let's see. Um, this is the document. And if this is what you want to publish, well, go ahead. Um, I would say we should add some Creative Commons license as it is good style in uh, or best practice in uh, in OER context. So at the bottom of the whole thing, let's add a new, well, I scroll this up for everybody to see. Um, let's add a license, and uh, I've prepared the license generator of the Creative Commons website, and I just grab this here, copy it over, and paste it here. And as you can see at the bottom of the page, you have um, it, a clear signal of what people can do with this document. Of course, this video and this video and the image should be under Creative Commons. Um, this shouldn't be a problem here because I checked this before. So this is a Creative Commons document uh, video, this too. And uh, this image is CC, CC0. So now I can click on Publish and publish the document on the web. And this is the link that you would now use, for example, in social media or in your learning management system or wherever you want to share this document on the web. 
as you can see, it counts the views here. And if you want people to edit this note, they can click here. But if you don't want others that you don't know to edit the document, please think of using this, uh, this uh, scope selector, as I call it, where you can very um, easily decide on who is able to see and to edit this document. Now, um, that's all for the short introduction to how to use Hatchdoc. Um, please refer to the help page as, that I showed you and to the features document here and also to the slide example um, because you learn a lot from looking at the source code of these documents of how to how to work with it and what else you can do from a technical perspective. After this short introduction to Hatchdoc, I want to talk about my experiences in three different scenarios. First, I use Hatchdoc for teaching scholarly writing in class. My experience is that when I start from the first session in a semester with the conception of an assignment, of a term paper, students have much better results when they finally write the paper than they have when they start at the end of the semester and deal with the assignment for the first time. That means that at the beginning of the semester, I set up a Hatchdoc document with a scaffold of what they should think about for their assignment. And then I ask them to copy this scaffold into a Hatchdoc document that they host individually for themselves. If they want to, they can share the link to this pad with the class. We do this with a chat tool called MetaMost that we use to chat in class. So most of them does it, but they share it also with me. And this gives me the, po uh, the possibility, the opportunity to add references that I think they should have a look at or read, or I can um, ask them to find a good research question and do comment on this research question. So from week to week, I have a look at these paths and make comments on what the progress is that the students have in their paths. And I give, can give short assignments of please write an introduction or please find five relevant sources that you think you can use. And this iteration over the development of their term papers finally ends in a, um, in a good starting point for really writing the paper. And my experience is that it's really fun to write that, uh, to read their papers when they hand them in because they were planned together and uh, it was not something like, uh, well, some surprising thing. And um, to give you just a short view of how this might look like, you can see this here. It's in German, but please just have a look at the structure of this. So this is what I do with them. I, I call this in-document chat. Um, in other tools, you might do this in the margin, but this is not possible in Hatchdoc, so we do it this way. And um, you can always have some comments on the text that the students wrote here. And um, um, yeah. As you can see, this is full of, of thoughts and comments and links that uh, we have found, the student and me, sometimes other students as well. And uh, this is important also because it makes the writing process not a so intimate thing as it usually is. It, it, um, it gives students the possibility to open up their writing for others in an open source way. So um, release early, release often, and uh, let others have a look at your writing. And uh, sometimes this makes it better, but quite often 
the biggest task is really for the students to open up their writing. But this is the social level that I was talking about, which is um, important here. And here is something that students can learn from this small example to work in the open on the web if they want to, I don't force them, and uh, perhaps find out something about the advantages of release early, release often and uh, fail often and fail fast and all these um, things that you can say about open source development. The second experience I want to talk about is using Hatchdog for developing learning material together. So this is more a staff member thing, meaning that colleagues work together, for example, on a learning material, an OER that needs to be prepared and published finally. And with a, um, a colleague that I, um, I coached in developing um, a learning material for a learning arrangement that's called collaborative ideation. Um, we used Hatchdog, as you can see here. So this is his document um, where he and uh, another colleague wrote down everything from first ideas to pro project management, project management things. Um, up to content and, as I showed before, um, real media embedding like this timeline here that you can see. It's also an iframe, as I showed before, or an H5P element um, that they wanted to have in the final learning arrangement. And this gave them the opportunity to do some kind of rapid prototyping with all the without the clicking in learn management systems um, in order to see this and, um, and to see the, the results and uh, without uh, needing to share um, uh, back end uh, access of complicated content management systems. It was just the link that they shared with among, among them and with me so that uh, it was a very very good way of uh, discussing every week in a geofix, discussing the content development. So, and uh, well, this is a very long document. As I said before, this is some, perhaps uh, an advantage as well as a disadvantage. But uh, as you have these, um, these anchor points here, you can absolutely jump to these um, headlines here. You can share the, um, the anchors for example, in a chat and discuss about certain things here. And this is the, the sketch. It is really a, a prototypical sketch that then was transferred into the content management system um, of Hamburg Open Online University, where you can see the same thing that I showed before, the timeline. But this was then a certain point in time where they really copied over the whole content of the pad before they we worked in this Hatchdog document for conception and for collecting the media and then transferring it over. That was a very uh, there was a great process without all the barriers that back end clicking of content management systems have. Besides this pad, they also had another pad that I want to show because it gives you the impression of what I what I mean with um, Hatchdog can be used to build a website right away. So for four workshops they hosted, they needed to announce what was happening. They needed to announce where uh, the entry points to boards and pads and other sources were. And so they created in Hatchdog um, uh, some kind of a landing page that you can see here where um, every information for the four workshops is embedded and um, they could easily correct this even while they were hosting the workshops. They made it possible for others to work on this document as well during the workshops and had a very, very low barrier collaboration style um, in working on this document. This was posted on social media and uh, 
as you can see, it was viewed quite a lot of times here. And um, this is another example from this project um, with an, uh, the use of a Hatchdog document to publish a simple website. The third and last example I want to talk about is the collection of information with learners in um, synchronous and asynchronous session style. Um, as you can see in the references, um, it was a course on robotics and AI where learners met in a learning circle, learning circle style by peer-to-peer -peer university, and um, there was no OER in German on robotics and, and AI that we wanted to use in this learning circle for the learners to walk through as the peer-to-peer -peer university concept of learning circles um, supposes. So the decision was, well, then let's write the material ourselves. So we started with a Hatchdog document with no content and discussed everything we knew and wanted to know about robotics and AI in the group. While we were in a video conference tool with a Hatchdog document open, we put down everything that we were speaking about, all the links that we shared, all the thoughts that we had on these links. Um, we, sh we sh shared them in the chat and we added them to the pad. And after six weeks, we had really a pad that we were proud of because um, there was so much thoughts and discussion points and links in it that we thought, well, let's go on with that. Let's try out what can we do with that. And um, everybody agreed in this group, agreed on, let's publish this as an OER. Um, let's see, perhaps someone needs the collection of these links and our thoughts. And um, as you will find in the references, I will show this here for you. We made a little book out of it, which was quite easy because the pad was written in Markdown. And Markdown is a language that can easily be converted to other formats like HTML or PDF documents or even slideshows. Now, what we did here, and I just scroll through it that you can see um, what came out of this. This is the content of our pad. Of course, we put some work in it to make it look like that, but not much because it's the exported pad and some emails that we had written together, converted to a PDF document and published as an OER with a DOI so that others can use it. So that was another great experience having Hatchdog as this website-like editor which makes it possible for learners and teachers um, alike to add whatever they find on the web, collect this, put this together, create this, and finally, perhaps not necessary, but perhaps publish the whole thing. For me, Hatchdog is not just um, another tool with great features to collaborate on texts. It is more a website editor than a writing tool for office document-like texts. It has the possibility to publish what you wrote at the end on the web. Make it findable in search engines and share it with others in a very easy way. You do not need a web server to upload the website because it's already uploaded. Technical feature, great. But the second thing that is from a pedagogical perspective, even more important, I think, is that it is a vehicle to learn collaboration on a social level. So you have to be brave and courageous to really write while others are watching. I don't say that this is what one should or must do, but if you, want to, if you really want to find out what collaboration means on different levels, this is a way to check this out. So negotiating while you are synchronously working on this pad. 
And this is something that I really like about Hatchdog, that it is um, a playground to learn about yourself, uh, your openness towards others, towards your digital identity on the web and uh, how far you want to go with your content. Do you want to publish? Don't, do you want to keep it for yourself? All these grades of working with the tool are given here um, besides many other features that perhaps you find out. Well, please get in contact with me if you like Hatchdog and if, if you have experience with it, um, you will find my information in the references. So thanks for watching.